the prince finally come out of hiding? Not talking to you. Nice to see you finally got the ears off. Tell me, how did you break the curse? I am not here to further your plot right now. I'm looking for my save file. What is that old relic? A paperback copy of this dimension. I keep it here to avoid cross con What? Is there something wrong? Ooh, ooh, please, please tell me it's traumatic. No, 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 no. This, 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 this can't be right. It says here, Turtles in Time isn't ours? Tur turtles in what now? The fourth Ninja Turtles game. It, 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 they spent so many hours throwing foot soldiers around. You were there. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they made that TMNT game for the Nintendo. I, I remember that. Something about a dam? Yeah, Nintendo it had sequels, include one on the Super Nintendo, two on the arcade. There were no sequels, you idiot. A dam level caused the first one to flop so hard it, it even killed the TV show. No, that's not true. That's impossible! Oh, I love seeing you like this. Please, please. What else in your life is a lie? No, 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 this has to be... No, no, no. Oh, Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. The what? Oh, it's only one of the greatest cartoons of all time. Remember that much. Debuted in 1983, it ran for three seasons, but had a rerun life that ran well into the 90s. Dungeons and Dragons was awesome. It pulled real references from the game, showed the crazy situations group would get into, and even the personality clashes that make for a great party experience. It's... It's part of why Dungeons and Dragons reached the use so well in the 80s and beyond. Sounds painful and delightfully weird. I'm in. Oh, can do, my handsome nemesis, can do. Um, is there a DVD? Oh, I mean, there are, but uh, you're going to see this the way I saw it. Poorly recorded off Fox Kids. That is cruel and unusual, even for you. I am so proud I'm finally getting through. Shh. It's starting. Wow! It's me! Give me a break! I don't like this! Whoa! What's happening? Whoa! Where are we? Look out! Wow. That was a rush title sequence that told us nothing. That was the full scene. Here, the, the recap it in a second. Oh, this is going to be painful. We've got Hank the Ranger, Eric the Cavalier, Presto the Magician. Magician? <laughs> that is not a real class. Well, he's not a real spellcaster, so it's fair. So the DM didn't think to make one of them a healer. Why would they need one of those? That is true, but no wizard either. Nope. Just Presto the Magician. And what kind of spells does he cast? Is he evocation, abjuration, necromancy? I, I mean, he's got a magic hat. All the heroes get a magic item when they enter the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. The thief gets an invisibility cloak, the acrobat gets a staff. Acrobat! One fire at a time, storyteller. And the magician gets the aforementioned magic hat. Oh, so it like increases intelligence and makes the spellcasting more powerful? Maybe extra spells per day? Uh, no. Hocus Pocus, Alex Bob, give me some stuff to make that bug bug off! Look, I did it! You did it all right! You doubled our trouble! Wow, they didn't even have to try with sat AM programming, did they? Well, the ranger gets a bow that Green Arrow and Hawkeye would kill each other over. <laughs> it shoots raw energy that can take almost any form to solve problems the party find themselves in. Uh, the Barbarian also gets this cool club that strikes the ground so hard it causes earthquakes. Well, he's certainly up in the ante. What does the Cavalier get by chance? Magic Lance? Magic Horse? A shield. Yes, a shield to, I assume, go with his Magic Lance? He doesn't have a lance. No lance? No. I mean... Gonna look pretty ridiculous on a horse with just a shield. No mount either. 
Does the DM just hate the Cavalier? Oh, 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 most definitely. Just, just watch how they talk to each other. You must take the box to Skull Mountain, place it under the shadow of the skull at high noon, then open it. But you must never, never open the box anywhere else. Oh, I get it. There's something in the box and nothing in the box. The nothing is valuable, but the something is horrible. And if we open it in the right place, we get nothing, which is good. But if we open it in the wrong place, we get something, which is horrible. I love this little guy. Huh? Wait, the Dungeon Master is actually a character in this. Dude, he's one of the main characters. And none of this happens to strike you as strange or unusual? Oh, come on. We both know you've also indulged in a few DM PCs to move the plot along. For instance, in the first episode, the DM pulls them through a portal in front of Tiamat, making them run for their lives unarmed before he actually starts giving them their magic items. <laughs> Just in the nick of time, too. Their first encounter is with Tiamat. But then the big bad of the campaign named Venger comes along and threatens all of them before ultimately running away. Well, that's what we have a lot to talk about the first episode. That's the first two minutes of the episode. The rest is just about them saving the DM. Okay. Let's, uh, let's try this again. But explain it to me like it makes sense. DM's just, you know, hanging around, riding a snail mount like you do. When, you know, the stock bad guys come along and, of course, he just kind of starts toying around with them. But they somehow get the other hand and capture him in a shield. And then, then the party's got to come and, you know, get into the secret volcano layer and, and, and rescue him before... Vanguard can harvest his life force. Oh, so the party just isn't handed the solution? Uh, not at all. In fact, they have to fight six manticores. Six manticores at level one party. <laughs> oh, how are they going to get out of this one? Well, you know, they, they do the perfectly logical step of befriending the creatures and using them as mounts to ride to the cavern. They're going to drop us. I don't believe it. They're friendly. Oh, that was that a brain hemorrhage? Or an aneurysm. The same thing. I don't know. Keep talking before I go unconscious. Once at the dungeon, the party breaks into the mining operation, finding enslaved dwarves along the way. The bad guys capture everyone, except for the thief, because, you know, she's, she's got the cloak. And, uh, of course, she then comes back and, and, and frees everybody, and then, and then they have to fight their way to the core. Let me guess. Arriving just in time to save the DM before the villain succeeds. Actually, they don't arrive in time. The life force has left him. And for you, the game is over. Wow. I really underestimated this show. They introduced this clearly game-breaking and deity-like character only to have him immediately killed by the bad guy. Huh. Certainly sets the stakes. <laughs> I can see why you love this show. That is actually really cool. Um, but what really happens is... Dungeon Master, look out! But we just saw his life force go out. How is he still alive? It's DM magic! Oh, stop! No. Really. Evil energy is like evil thoughts. Change its direction, and it changes to good. That... That, that doesn't... That's not how... You can't just... Hmm. So he just blips the bad guy away, but what about the rest of his, you know, army in that volcano? Oh, well, he takes care of that, too. Dungeon Master, look! Oh my. There's too many of them! We'll never stop all of them. Not to worry, you won't have to. So, if the DM can just free himself and reverse magic and blow up volcanoes, why does he even need the players? Well, you know, so the party could feel like they did something. They helped. This is why you never put yourself in your own campaigns. The DM could literally solve every problem. 
The party is fed breadcrumbs to follow and until they start to stray from the path. Then, of course, the DM just has to swoop in and make sure that nothing will permanently kill off his players. It's a toxic relationship where the party feels good but accomplishes nothing. Well, the DM story plays out as planned. Well, I guess I never really thought of it that way. This, this really puts that box episode in a new light. <laughs> this ought to be good. How does that one go? Oh, well, well, the DM gives us this enormous, heavy treasure box, but when they open it, it's, it's of course, empty. He then tells them they have to, like, you know, haul it all the way across the world, put it on this fragile bridge, fight off all of Venger's henchmen along the way, and then enter it. So, uh, what's in the box? Endless potential. <laughs> I bet it's just the stuff the Dungeon Master doesn't want to move, so he just uses the party to haul it around for him. Well, no, it's actually just more like a, a, a portable portal. And the DM explains to them that uh, wherever you put it determines wh where that portal goes. And on the rock bridge is, is the weak point between the two worlds, so that's where they gotta put it. Wait, so the kids are trapped now in this dungeon? Uh, yeah, that was kind of implied by the whole amusement park transport scene. So, what exactly did they do to just activate this magical transportation device? What do you mean? They get on the car, they ride into the tunnel, and they're just... Instantly teleported to another dimension? Does, does that mean that everyone who goes on this ride ends up here? I, I mean, no. It's... So... Why? Because they're the main characters. DM, I'm going to take pleasure in breaking this to you, but uh, this DM sucks. Okay, okay, but you haven't seen the end of the box episode. Give it a chance. The party starts to enter the box at the base of Skull Mountain due to a fake clue left by the Venger cronies. The party all goes in. Except for Eric. I guess we better go down and check. Well, well, you know, in case that's a bad guess, I'll stay topside with Presto and keep a lookout. Wow, I can see why the Dungeon Master hates this guy. Yeah, this is a, a, a common behavior. He, he splits the party constantly. Even in the first episode. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Let me tell you. Well, the rest of the party is in a volcano, you know, having an adventure. Eric decides to go off wandering through the swamp alone and nearly dying multiple times. Dude, don't touch those. They look undead. They're probably level drain. And get this. <laughs> he escapes the death mire by falling through a hole in the swamp. <laughs> yeah, a hole in the swamp. Not only that, it lands him right in the middle of the bad guy's lair just as the party is entering. That is the laziest plot point I've ever seen. The DM literally makes a fun slide to the rest of the party and the main plot. Come on, we gotta finish the box. After escaping that weird dimension, the, the, the kids eventually find the rock bridge and, and manage to enter the box right there. And it turns out it takes them back to their world through the ride! Yay, they're all safe! Well, that was anticlimactic. But the Big Bad follows them through the hole, invading our world with his magical powers. Wow, so uh, let me guess. He's going to use his magical powers to go on a rampage, completely dominating their realm, like he did his own? Well, well no, because he, he actually really wants to, to take the, the, the magic items the DM gave him, because uh, uh, they're super awesome. I mean, th th that, that bow alone, who wouldn't want that bow? So what do they do to Venger on Earth, then? Oh, nothing, because the weapons actually uh, uh, stopped working when, when, when they went through the box. Give me your weapons, and I will leave you in peace. Resist me, and you shall be destroyed. We'll give them to you, Venger, with everything they've got! Hey, where are my arrows? So, uh, what stops him from just conquering Earth, then? Uh, the kids go back to the ride. Uh, DM, the items don't work anymore. What is the allure? What's the reason he still wants them? <laughs> they're useless. Well, you know, because he, 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 he wants to catch the kids, and they're they're... they're run away from him. Wait, 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 wait. So, why does Venger go back to the D&D realm? Why did his magic work and their items didn't? Why would Eric even go back against his own stubborn nature? Why? Because the master wills it. Dear, <laughs> come on. Even you have to see it by now. These kids have no idea how the world works, and the master wants to keep them that way. He just... Throws them into situations way out of their league. They stare at him blankly for how to solve it, and he graciously spoon feeds them the solutions that only make sense to tell that he's trying to tell. 
If any of them go astray, like Eric always does, he is immediately punished and made to feel a fool. Oh my god, you're right. I'm starting to get deja vu. I've seen this story before. Because another episode has the party fighting against a creature that is caught on their fishing pole, which poisons the barbarians. And of course, the DM tells them that there can only be one antidote from the talon of a yellow dragon. He then ditches them, leaving them to get tricked by two perfect clones of him. Oh my god. You care to repeat that? The master makes up this crap plot that the players have no control over just for his own sick satisfaction and then railroads them so fast that they don't have time to think of an alternate solution. He even trolled Eric into marrying the queen of the land of the Yellow Dragon so he can become king, get a beautiful wife, only to turn her into a monster mid-ceremony. Such a cool move. And one I, I, I definitely recognize this style now. Yeah, you should. It's the hallmark of T.M. Bacchus. Damn, don't. This whole inane show is just a documentary of, uh, of the Master's insane, abusive treatment of his party members and players. He makes the story all about himself, takes gleeful pleasure in putting the party in way over their heads before delightfully plucking them out of danger with ridiculous plot shenanigans and mocking specific players while over-rewarding his friends, like Hank the Ranger, with all the XP, loot, and all the good stuff. This is a Master Bacchus documentary. Damn, stop. What? Don't you remember the rule? About the Master Bacchus? Shh. Come on, man. You know. Never invoke his name three times. Oh, crap. Viva, Fofacus. You dare summon TM Bacchus? <laughs> I'm never gonna get my story concluded. Go the full switch. Oh. <laughs> Positively marvelous! What else in your life is a lie? <laughs> that would be too much. <laughs> if I had the Insano goggles, though. <laughs> <laughs>